Hi, my name is Cody Hosterman and I'm a technical director here at Pure Storage for VMware Solutions. What I'm going to be demoing today is VMware Virtual Volumes on the Flash Array. I'm going to show you how simple and easy it is to set up, deploy, manage, and maintain your virtual envir environment on the Flash Array using Virtual Volumes. So let's take a look at the demo. So the first thing we're going to do here is we need to register our VOS provider. The VOS provider on the Flash Array runs inside of the controllers. And you can manually register it or we can use our vSphere web client plugin to do this really easily for you. You right click on the array you have registered in your plugin and then add register storage provider. This is going to add both controllers, both redundant active active VOS providers into your vCenter environment. This is what allows you to begin to provision virtual volumes and manage your storage policy based management. So once we've completed that task in the vSphere web client, the VOS providers for both controllers as you can see here are indeed registered. Now the next step is storage policy based management. In order to provision a virtual machine according to SPBM, you need to have storage profiles created. You can create your own or once again using our vSphere web client plugin, you can import our protection groups which is basically replication and snapshot policies on the array and automatically turn them into storage policies. So if I right click on my array and choose import protection groups and choose the ones I want, in this case I'm choosing all of my protection groups. I can import these as storage policies. And this allows you to have policies that are relevant for that flash array or others immediately without any manual configuration of your policies. So we'll take a look at one of these and see what they look like. So I'll choose my one hour snap, one day replicate, and look at the storage policy requirements inside of it. Under my rule set, there's a variety of flash array specific rules. I always want this virtual volume to be on a flash array. I want it to have a local snapshot interval of one hour, a replication interval of one day, and also retention policies. These are all automatically configured. But of course, you can change them, tune them, delete them, do whatever you want with them exactly as your, your applications need. So the next step is mounting a storage container. Now in order to be able to provision VVOLs and access those VVOLs, you need a protocol endpoint as well. You can manually create the protocol endpoint connected to your host group. And you can also manually mount the storage container. But why not do it all in one step? So using our vSphere web client plugin, once again, we can do this automatically. So I can right click on my cluster and choose create data store and then vVol. What this process is going to do is it's going to mount the storage container on this specific cluster. And also, if there's no protocol endpoint provisioned, it'll automatically connect it to the host group, rescan the VMware cluster, and then mount the storage container. The protocol endpoint on the flash array is automatically created. If you want more than one, you can certainly do this. But in reality, there's really no need for more than one protocol endpoint on the flash array. So now my storage container is mounted, and as you can see, my protocol endpoint is provisioned to both my hosts. If we take a look at my storage container, you can see it's type vVol, not VMFS like you're maybe used to. It is now mounted to both hosts inside of my cluster. Now that it's mounted, we can move on to actually doing some provisioning of my VM. So what I'm going to first do here is deploy a virtual machine from template. This template is sitting on VMFS, traditional storage for your VMware environment. The nice thing about this is how do you migrate into vVols? Well, you can do a storage vMotion, or you can do a deploy from template from a VMFS or a vVol based VM. There's a lot of flexibility in this. In this case, I'm going to be deploying a VM from a VMFS data store and that target VM is actually going to be a virtual volume based virtual machine. So in the provisioning wizard, I can choose one of my policies that I created earlier. And that'll tell me what storage is compatible with that policy. I have one data, one data store, one storage container that's compatible. Different policies might have multiple protection groups as well. You choose a replication group if you have a replication or snapshot policy. And these are consistency groups, also known as protection groups on the flash array. So you can choose which one you want to put that in if multiple match the requirements of that storage policy. Right now, I've not provisioned my virtual machine yet. When it gets created, we'll create a volume group and the volumes that are created for that virtual volume will be added to it. So I'll complete the wizard and this will copy that VMFS template into a vVol based VM. 
If I go to my flash rate, I can see a volume group has been created automatically for that virtual machine that represents the VM object on the array. If I click on that volume group, I can see that my config vvol that holds the configuration information in my VM and my data vvol for my one virtual disk on that VM has been created and added to that volume group. If I power on that virtual machine, the flash array and its VOS provider will automatically create the swap vvol. And of course, when you power it off, it automatically deletes it as well. So you can see my swap vvol has been created and added to my volume group on the flash array. Now the next step is let's add a new virtual disk. Anytime you add or remove a virtual disk, that change is also reflected on the flash array. For every virtual disk you provision for a VM, there's going to be a flash array volume that's also created. When you delete a virtual disk from a VM, that flash array volume is also deleted. It is VM granular and virtual disk granular on the flash array. So now that we've created this additional virtual disk, we can um, view it on the flash array or we can view it inside of the vSphere web client plugin that we offer. It tells us the underlying information for all the virtual volume virtual disks you have presented. On the flash array we can see my data vvols, both of them now are now in existence. My 200 gig one I had earlier and now my current 40 gig one I just added. I can also report on these. I can report on the individual vvols if I want from a performance or even capacity standpoint. Or I can report on the VM itself by using the volume group that represents that virtual machine to report on things like performance. And it's no different as you're looking here with performance as the capacity screen. I can report on what's the data reduction, what's the changes in capacity for this virtual machine, the volume group, or the individual virtual disks, the volumes. There's a lot of flexibility because of this integration between the flash array and vSphere. So what else can we do um, with the vSphere web client plugin that we offer? Um, and the features that the virtual volumes offer with the flash array. So here's a nice benefit. Now I'm going to go and remove this virtual disk. And I didn't want to actually delete it, but I accidentally deleted it. So now it's gone. Well, traditionally, now I've got to go to my backup and restore it, or however I've, I've protected that virtual machine. When you delete a volume on the flash array, it goes into our recycling bin for 24 hours. So that volume actually isn't deleted. It's now in our destroyed volumes folder, as you can see. So you can manually recover that, or you can go to that virtual machine, choose Restore Deleted Disk, and we'll automatically recover that virtual volume and add it back to that virtual machine for you. And there it comes back. That's a nice quick benefit of using vvols on the flash array and our web client plugin. And now my virtual volume, as you see, in the flash array has also been added back to the uh, volume group. So when we navigate back to the volume group, click on it, we'll see there's that data vvol back out of the destroyed volumes folder. So let's deploy another virtual machine, because there's some mechanisms and tools that we can use between virtual machines for dev test scenarios, copy, backup, and so forth. So I'll provision another virtual machine based on vvols um, using a selected policy. This time, I'll choose a slightly different policy slash protection group to put this virtual machine in. So I'll choose my replication group, and as I said before, that's my protection group on the flash array. And it'll be the gold one. And then I'll deploy that virtual machine. So the virtual machine has been created. It's about done. Great. And let's look at the configuration. As remember, we added that original vir uh, virtual machine to a consistency group protection group. You can see the one we just added now is in its gold protection group. And my original one as well is in that bronze replication group. Right. Adding it to a policy doesn't just create, an, and create the volumes and provision them. It also adds them to the relevant protection groups. So what if I want to copy a virtual machine, a virtual disk, from one VM to another? Well, let's say I have a VM running on my a virtual disk rather, running on my original VM, and I want to present a copy to that to my second one. Well, I can choose either that virtual disk or even any snapshot of that virtual volume slash virtual disk, and our web client plugin will create a copy of it. But maybe I don't want that point in time. I want to create a new snapshot. Here's a nice benefit of virtual volumes on the flash arrays. When you take a VMware snapshot, it doesn't create a VMware snapshot. It creates a flash array snapshot because that virtual disk is a volume on the array. And so when you create a VMware snapshot, you get a flash array snapshot. 100% efficient, no performance impact, no capacity impact, right? It's 100% deduped. So you can see that snapshot has been created on the flash array, even though it was initiated from the VMware interface. So now that I have a new point in time, of that virtual disk from my other VM. I want to create a copy from that snapshot 
and present it to VM2. So I'll choose that point in time I just created. And now our vSphere Web Client plugin will create a new vVault out of that snapshot and present it to my second virtual machine so I can run my dev test. Now maybe I've, made, I've run my dev test, I've done some changes, but now I want to refresh it back to the original state so I can rerun the, my tests. Well, I can go to my overwrite virtual volume disk workflow inside of my vSphere Web Client plugin and overwrite it back from that snapshot. There's a lot of flexibility using snapshots because of that VM granularity, that virtual disk granularity on the flash array, and some nice value add from the vSphere Web Client plugin that we offer for the flash array. So I deleted my second VM. I'm done with it. If we take a look, the volumes, that VM isn't actually gone on the array. It's all into our destroyed volume groups or volume folders or snapshot folders. So you have 24 hours to once again recover a deleted VM or its individual virtual disks. So the last thing I want to talk about here quickly is storage policies. What about day two operations? What if someone has changed the configuration of my virtual volume? Well, the nice thing about the VOS provider is that VM is aware of the VMs under its policy and how they're configured. Right now, my VMs are compliant because my protection group is properly configured that hosts that VM according to that policy. So what if I change it from one hour to two hours? Now my underlying protection group has a different policy, one that does not jive with what my storage policy has in vCenter. And so if I run a compliance check that runs automatically, or you can manually run it like I did, that VM is now marked as non-compliant because the underlying storage has been manually overridden in its, with its configuration. And so I can go back and change it and fix it, or I can rerun that virtual machine through the provisioning wizard to fix the compliance problem. Since I fixed the protection group manually, my VM is now compliant. And that's everything. As you can see, it's very easy to provision, manage, and control your virtual machines on the Flash Array with the Flash Array VOS provider and VM or vSphere virtual volumes. So thanks for watching, and look for a lot more cool stuff coming in the future with virtual volumes on the Flash Array.